This is the biggest tree job he's ever... All right, last day in Norway, and we are removing Norway spruce. This is actually really exciting. Here's a cow pie, and here are some big spruce trees that we're taking care of today. This is cool, this is on a big farm property. This building right here, which we need to protect, this is actually, I don't know how old it is, it's like hundreds of years old. This is actually, and it's pretty messy right now, but this, hasn't been used in a long time. This was a sauna a long time ago. So they'd like heat up the stones that you can see it's all like, the wood's all kind of, it smells smoky in there actually, but it's a really old, these buildings are like hundreds of years old. So these are the trees that we're taking care of today. They're big old Norway spruce trees, which is really cool for me to be <laughs> removing these in Norway. This one we're gonna have to lower limbs out of because it's over this building right here. It's really cool. They use like stones on the top of birch bark for the roofs and see so, yeah, how we're gonna have to lower this one and check this out this is they mill their own wood on this farm this farm is like thousands of acres yeah so look at this mill that they use i mean this is like old stuff i think the farmer is coming by later i'm i really want to know how old all this stuff is they still use it so they you know it's a huge property yeah so this is all mostly probably spruce and birch and some oak probably so this is i think this is hardwood and this is softwood no i think this is softwood and this is hardwood over here and there's this machine but i'm really curious how old this, this thing looks really old too it's from sweden really cool so i mean some of these properties these farms they're just like ancient they're so old there's the resaw over there it's amazing this stuff like at a first glance you might think this was abandoned you know because it's so just ancient looking but they they use this still like regularly look at all the wood they're milling up this place is so beautiful it's like it's just amazing even just driving around and just looking at everything it's so it's a really incredible place some of the buildings here are older than the country i live in you know it's crazy and we're with sandra grimas it's it's, uh, I think, you, what is it, Grimus Skugog Machine? Is yeah, that it? Yeah, that's perfect, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the, it's, all your words are really hard to say. Yeah. Yeah, and these are the trees that we're going to take down. We're both going to be climbing. Yeah, I guess we'll just get geared up and get after it. And a huge thanks to Husqvarna for giving me these saws while I'm here. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to travel with my chainsaws or not. I didn't really want to try it on the plane. I knew someone at Husqvarna. I thought this is a long shot, but I was like, hey, can I get some saws? Well, I'm in Norway, and a guy from Stockholm, Sweden, actually drove these out to us so that we could use them. They're, they're actually from the factory. And this one actually doesn't even, doesn't have dogs on it. I think they, they forgot to put dogs on this one. But that's okay. We'll <laughs> make do anyways. The saw has a lot of power. I actually really like all these saws. So that's what we're going to be using. Chop those babies down. Can't believe this is your summer. This is Keep not that warm. Dude. It's bad timing, okay? Bad timing. It's crazy. I was in Pennsylvania, like their hottest week of the year. Yeah. Now I'm here, your coldest week of the summer. <laughs> and this wow. is better for working than that, though. I mean, it, this will probably be horrible in 30 degrees anyways. I think I'm actually going to take my sweatshirt off. I'm kind of warm. Crazy. There's like dirt on top of this roof. It's just so old. Whoa. Oh, it's heavier than I was expecting. Oh, I think. Why are these stubs so heavy? I really need this one to just pop off. I don't want it swinging into that thing. That's what the undercut, undercut's for. Okay, so I didn't bring my steel core flip line because I was trying to save weight on the plane. But in this tree, I would like to have a steel core flip line. So I'm using Sandra's because, and I'm not used to this sheath either. Um, but I'm using his flip line because I'm going to be using my climbing line to lower the branches, which is not the like textbook way to do this. So with this tree, I'm kind of working with what I got here because I didn't bring any rigging gear. And also like as far as tree companies go, it doesn't really get any smaller than this. You know, Sandra doesn't do a lot of jobs with other climbers. You 
know, he's a, he's a one-man show and he doesn't have as much rigging gear as I was thinking would be here So I like I might have actually brought a porter wrap or something All I'm saying is in a perfect world what I probably would like to do is like set up rigging in one of these Block porter wrap swing all these away from the building, you know be like double tied in and stuff That's sort of like a perfect world and we're talking about like thousands of dollars worth of you know rigging equipment in my little perfect world Well, we, we don't have that with us. So I'm just gonna be rigging out the branches myself with my climbing line and like I said it's not uh, it's not like the OSHA approved way to do this but tree work a lot of times you've got trees to cut down and you're working with what you got and this is this literally is what I've got so yeah so sometimes you just don't have all the fancy gear you know you got to do it the old the old school way yeah like this is a vill this is a small village here like he's actually never even used a porter app you know he's 21 he's just been he hasn't been climbing that long he doesn't have the fanciest stuff so that's why we're doing it this way <laughs> Wow, that is a big branch. Go ahead and just lay this down, would you? Just kind of guide it so that the butt falls that way. Wow, I think it's heavy. And I didn't bring hardly any gear with me either because I was trying to save a bunch of weight. So I'll be using these stubs like friction devices. I take all of our modern gear for granted, you know. I probably make a video like how to use a porter app because I just like kind of think everybody knows, but I forget that not everybody uses those, you know. Alright, I grab that. These limbs are heavier than I was expecting. Jeez, even with even like this, it's still pretty heavy. Wow, dude, these limbs are big. Oh, this will be the worst cleanup. <laughs> Probably just going to use gasoline for it. Yeah, just light it on fire. Can I get your rope as well with your uh, zigzag? Zigzag is the way to go. You used to use camion saver before, right? Yeah, years ago. Yeah, it was too much of a mess to use, right? Yeah, I just don't like carrying a bunch of stuff and also I got mine stuck a bunch of times. So I'm tying into a single limb, but I can see it slightly arches up right here. If this were totally straight or slightly droopy, sometimes guys will tie into one limb and the line will work its way down and they'll fall. But if it's at an angle, we're okay. It's awkward where you are or? Yeah, because if I try to lower these limbs straight down, they're just gonna be right on the roof. So I had to go up a, just a little bit to get them to swing this way. Yeah, all oh, beautiful, that'd be cool. Yeah. Beautiful. And actually get a little more friction being around this uh, standing here too. Like if I were to wrap the stub, it'd probably be too much friction. Just coming around to this side and cutting it probably the perfect amount. Man. Just. It's really beating up. Good thing this roof is made of stone, I guess. It, it'll take a beating, I think. So what I'm gonna do with this one, cause I need to stand on the other side and cut it. I'm gonna wrap this just a bunch of times so that it won't fall. And then I'll come back over here and take as many wraps as I need to off to get to lower to the ground. Cause I'll be able to more comfortably cut it if I'm not holding the rope. Okay, this next one's gigantic. <laughs> Look at this one. Try to leave as much wood on that top side as I can. Huh. Dude, look at this thing. This limb is gigantic. Insane gigantic. how massive they are. Wow. Got a lot of wraps on this. <laughs> Trying to let it settle into 
the holding wood on the top there. I'll leave as much as possible. Jack's going slowly. See, it's starting to close. It's going. Oh, that is beautiful. Didn't even touch it. Dude, that was... That was cool. That's history. That's going in the Bible. <laughs> that was great. The newest, you want to cut the minimum necessary wood. See how much I left there? I just knew, like, just wait. It'll, it'll go. Oh, look at this. See, that's why a lot of guys just tie knots. Look at My carabiner's open. If I had my carabiner 180 degrees, then that wouldn't happen. That, that is definitely not ideal. We're gonna have to inspect that when we get back. Especially a branch like this big, a knot probably would have been better. Especially, this is my climbing carabiner. I probably should've just had a knot. Or at least gotten the carabiner set right. And then the spine would be right here. This is the spine. Ideally, this should be right here. And the gate should be right here. So I want some friction for this. I could wrap the rope twice up here, like I did on some of the other ones. But if I can leave a stub, that's even better because I can really easily add and remove wraps. Like once it's hanging, I'm committed to however much friction I get if I just wrap the branch itself. If I wrap it too much, it can be really hard to get the branch down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this one way out here. And now I've got my little friction stub right there. Yeah, if I would have hung the rope any lower, those branches would have really creamed the roof, but we're okay. So now, because I have this stub, I can just clip this on. See, I want to make sure that the carabiner is facing, the back is facing that way. See, that'll be much better. Now I just add, I can just add a wrap real easy. I want to swing this one too, actually. So you know what I'm going to actually do? A few more wraps. The deeper I go in the collar, the better it's going to hang on. Try to do like a 45 degree angle, you know? Like if you just try doing a face cut sideways, the branch is just gonna break on the hinge wood because you're putting sideways force on the hinge. If you, it obviously wants to go straight down, so you kind of do it at a 45. That's really as good as it gets. Do the bottom side first, that way you leave as much top, because this is your tension wood right here. The, it's like a guy wire, just like the rope. Back over here, Start taking wraps off. Here we go. I'm trying to hang the rope every time. I'm trying to hang it on this side because I want, if, if I just hung the rope over there, the limbs would be, it'd be hard for Sandra to work on the limbs, you know? I'm trying to get the limbs onto the easiest side for him, which is right where I'm standing. Okay, ready? Yeah. Yeah, look at that Viking power. Yeah, right. Nice. Actually, that would be a nice little porter up limb. Oh, uh, no, it's not going to work. It's kind of big. Okay. So what I'm going to do is this. See, now I'm committed to this much friction. It's like I just got to hope this is the right amount of friction, you know? The closer you get to the trunk, it's exponentially stronger here than here because you're putting shear force right here. And you're putting bending force out here. You know, you're peeling the branch down, whereas here you're shoving it back into the tree. Okay, ready? <laughs> That was the right amount of friction. Look how long these things are, man. The trees, growing on trees. Is this the biggest climbing job you've done? Yeah. That's cool. It's the biggest one you've done in Norway as well. <laughs> yeah, it's the biggest Norwegian trees I've ever done. Now here I can either pop it off or I can peel it down and try to throw the butt out. If I try to pop it off and it's too slow, it's gonna bounce into that roof. If I peel it down um, and, the, and it breaks prematurely, it might hit the roof. So if it holds on too long with the pop cut, it hits the roof. If it holds on not long enough with the peel cut, it hits the roof. This is really fibrous wood. My money's on the peel cut and the, the face cut, you know? I don't think it's gonna break premature. <sighs> Yep, it's really strong hinge wood in this spruce. And now this will be an even better rigging stub. It's actually stronger with all of that weight out there. Okay, here's a big one. Rig. Okay, rig.
How heavy do you think these are? Probably a few hundred pounds. I bet that's a three or four hundred pound branch, honestly. 200 kilograms, I think. Yeah. I mean, that thing's heavy. This isn't the best porter up stub because it goes up. Actually, it's good for tying into, but for friction, it, it kind of wants to work its way out. I'm gonna make a stub out of that one. I think I'm gonna toss a couple. Look at that thing. <laughs> so holding it at this angle helps keep it from sliding up the branch a little bit. heavy. Man, this spruce is so tough. There we go. The other ones will be way easier than this one. I think it might hit the building if I rig it like, man. Yeah, I'm gonna go get like a high tie-in spot. Rope's so short, I don't think I can actually set it any higher and rig. Actually, hey, how much rope do I have on the ground? I'm almost out of rope, right? You are, yeah. Wow, okay, so this is like 60 feet right here, almost 50. So I can't really set my rigging line any higher than this. Should be fine, okay. I'm just gonna leave this up here for now. I'm not really sure what to do. This rope is short and these pieces are long. I'm just gonna, I'd like to at least get a higher tying point. I think I'll be able to do a lot more with a nice high tying point. You know what? I'm just, I'm gonna have to rig this under the rope. Now what am I gonna have to do? How long is your rope? 45 meters. 45. So. Yours is 40. 40, so that'd be 120. So it's like 140 feet. Man, these meters are throwing me off. <laughs> uh, Oh, you might want to move your saw. What I'm doing right now is I'm a little like, not quite sure what I want to do. Like these limbs are really long. I think if I try to rig them from here, they're going to hit the building. We're, we don't have a lot of gear. We don't have a lot of rigging gear. We don't have a lot of anything. The ropes are actually pretty short. I don't even, we've got kind of a lot working against us on this tree. So I'm not quite sure what I want to do. So a lot of times what I do when I'm not sure what to do is I just cut what I know I should cut. So right now I'm just going to cut all the small branches that I can toss. I'm going to get a high time point. And that actually gives my mind sort of subconscious. My subconscious will kind of work on this tree while I'm climbing up there. And also once I have all the small branches out of the way and I got a nice tying spot, I'll be able to think more clearly as well. The things will make more sense. So I'm not quite sure what to do, so I'll just go up and just clear this puppy out and then it should be a little more clear at that point. And once I have a high tine, I can swing over here and get under this tree dealt with. I actually don't think I could double line down. I need to SRT down because my ropes are too short. It's actually a lot of cutting. A lot of branches in this tree. Look. 
Yeah, see, I should have done this in the beginning. Now I can like swing around and reach all sorts of stuff once I tie in. See, I've been trying to rig with my rope and climbing with his. Just try to be a nice guy, but I want a single line. The rope's not long enough. So I'm gonna use my rope because I can't take this uh, zigzag off that quickly because it's a... Uh... Actually, that splice might fit through here, actually. Maybe I'm wrong. It's got like a really small splice on it. No, it's not gonna go through there. Yeah, I'm gonna be using my climbing line. So that's one of the nice things about the akimbo is, first of all, I can do single line without carrying another device. I need a chicane to safely do it with that. But it's also midline attachable. Yeah, I should have just tied in at the beginning, up way up here. This is gonna be way better. I usually do that. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was just surprised by how big these limbs were. See, I think I can just piece out most of this now, actually. So once you get over these tops, everything gets a lot easier. The limbs down here that are super chunky, like that. You know what? Hey, Sandra. Yeah. I honestly feel like I'm just gonna be kind of whittling away for a while and I'm not gonna need any help on the ropes. If you wanted, you could probably head up another tree. Only thing is I might have you come down to help me at some point. I kind of like to try to piece out as much as I can. Sure, yeah. So I think these are so long, if we try to rig them out, they're gonna hit the building. And if I tip tie them, I don't think we have enough rope for that. Yeah. So why don't you just start maybe climbing up this one? Yeah, I think I'll start with the birch because you have my lifeline. Oh yeah, here, you can have it back. Oh, can? Yeah, this kind of sucks not having a rigging line. Yeah. Yeah, I can get the birch too. Like I can get all three of these trees. Okay, yeah. So if you just head up this spruce in the middle, that would be the best. Yeah, I'll do that. And hey, actually, you know what? I can set your line up here. Yeah, you can actually. I'll just get dressed. Okay, so we're making the best of what we've got and we don't have a lot to work with, you know Like at this point right here where the trees are topped. There's not a lot of rope left We both have I think his is more like 135 140 feet of rope like in a perfect world What I would love is to have a GRCS on the bottom of the tree a really long rope We could tip tie these bad boys cut them lower huge pieces down have a few guys to help We don't have any big equipment. We don't have any fancy rigging. We don't have any <laughs> we don't have any rigging gear at all if I even try to tip tie these, first of all, the friction sucks. Either I have to manage the friction in the tree or he has to manage the friction on the ground. And he's already busy dealing with the big piece. Plus, I'm almost positive we don't have enough rope to, because I'd have to set it up there, right, to tip tie these. It was fine rigging them off the butts, but now these ones are so long. If I rig them off the butts, they're so long, they're going to hit that building. So we're running out of options and I might need him to help me rig some more stuff later. But for now, I'm just going to piece out and toss everything I can. He, I told him to come up this tree. This tree is the the easiest one he, he doesn't have that much experience climbing so this one's a pretty open drop zone he can just drop everything more or less and let it fall well i piece out this stuff i may have to have him come down which sucks to ask somebody to do but it's either he just stands down there and just waits for me in case i need him or he can work on this while i'm working on that so having nice equipment <laughs> saves a lot of time this tree would go like imagine if we had a big crane out here we could just take this and he it'd be take no time at all but we literally just have our climbing gear out here and our bodies you know that's all we got we're making the best of what we can I, I'm just gonna have to piece out just cut and chuck everything I possibly can I mean I have to single line I can't even double rope because I'm gonna run out of rope but that's the way it works when you're trying to travel and fly around halfway around the world it's like it's already hard enough to jump blind to a tree job and you don't know what the trees are at home let alone a continent away so we're doing the best we can this is the biggest tree job he's ever oh, <laughs> yeah i'm good oh, standing on this <laughs> anyways so yeah i'm just gonna start whittling away i'm actually gonna go down i, I want to get this birch and this spruce out of my way too so i'm starting at the bottom now that i've got this high tie-in i'm gonna be working these three trees at the same time <laughs> He doesn't have a lot of gear, not only because he's like a brand new company, but also because it's actually really hard to get gear out here. It's tons of places have, don't ship out here. We have like two stores. One of them really good, the other people who doesn't really know kind of anything about all this. We're so spoiled in America. Yeah. Uh. Should I just drop these branches? 
I do an undercut so they don't peel too bad because you don't want them to just like rest on the ground and then just still be in the tree, you know? Yeah, but you wouldn't do a face cut on them. Probably not a face cut, just like an undercut, but you gotta be really careful you don't pinch your saw. I do an undercut, but just be extremely careful. Like it would really suck to pinch your bar. But you've also, you're also tied in, you know, you could cut it out there a little at the Y too. Yeah, I was thinking about that. A little safer, you know, because right now it's so long, if it peels and doesn't break, it's just going to be like resting on the ground and then it's going to be awkward for you. And you're going to be cutting it and hoping it doesn't land in your lap, you know. But if you just cut it like six feet out, you wouldn't even need to worry about that. I may have knocked a stone off that roof. Yeah, I think, I think so, but. It's really uh, hard not to. <laughs> yeah, it is. I know. I think it is fixable though. And then for hundreds of years, and I come and knock it down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah buddy. Yeah. Do you want to do all the trees or just some of them? I think all of them have to go. Man, we don't have to do all of them today if you don't want. Yeah, I mean, let's just see how far we get, okay? I like how bad it gets on the ground. <laughs> it's getting pretty bad. I mean, it's a lot of brush, man. I wish I had a chipper. So bad. Yeah. How are you going to clean it? I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking petrol, to be honest. You're going to burn it? Yeah, I was thinking that. It's too bad you can't just drive your tractors out here. Some of the other stuff we've done, like, has been close to his village. He can drive his tractors and his machines around. But we're probably an hour and a half away from his house right here. So he doesn't have any machine. <laughs> machinery. He's not sure how he's going to clean this up. I, uh, I feel bad. Dude, that branch is so big. Is that the biggest branch you've ever cut in a tree? I think so, yeah. Spruce? It wasn't even satisfying. Those are some wow. clumsy limbs though. Look, though. look how much that one drooped. Yeah. From that. It's really too bad those power lines are there. We could just drop yeah. all these things. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> the roof is really giving me a hard time. Man, this branch sucks. Hey, if we move that fence, oh no, I don't hit you gonna hit the wires? I don't think it would hit the wires, do you? What, the tree? No. I'm just right over this roof. I keep tickling it and big stones keep falling off. I kinda like to just fall this thing at this point now that it's not tangled up, you know? I think we could. The fence though, that's another thing. Can we move it? Does it move? Is it electric? Electric, yeah, but I don't know if- I'll get it, just, I'll get out there. I'll get it. I'm not afraid of that? I'm not afraid, I'm afraid of hitting the roof is what I'm afraid of. I meant like you're not afraid of getting the electric <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> Zip lining, dude. Man, that thing is so beefy. Single lining kind of sucks for limb walking compared to like the zigzag right now. Like how you are would be way easier right now. Cause you can actually like, lift yourself up with it. Yeah. I can't like lift my, I feel like actually lift my body weight. I was just thinking, but I don't know if it's stupid. What? Like there's a lot of cleanup here now and it'll just get worse. Like, especially when we put the wood on top of it, dude. I'm closing up to the part where it's like codominant ish and those will be really beefy and landing those on top of that. I don't know. What do you think? Just 
go for it or clean up. So you have to decide what's gonna be easier for you, either to do this job in stages and to clean up what we've got. Like we finished these trees and finish what we got. And then you come back and finish that one over there. Or you have me climb that while I'm here and then you deal with the cleanup. But you're gonna have wood on top of all the branches. So it's gonna be like really messy and it's gonna be a lot of material. So you have to decide, would you rather have a horrible cleanup or would you rather climb that tree when I'm not here? You know, that's so much to clean up by yourself. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. I might just take that by myself if it's okay for you. Yeah, it's dude, I totally understand that. Obviously it's cool to cut everything down like for footage, but that's, that's so, you have so much work to do and I'm gonna be all the way in America, you know? So it's no, I, I think that we should probably just finish these three trees then, you know? Yeah. I honestly like feel bad, like feel kind of bad for you. Like this I also be... feel bad for me. <laughs> That's a lot. This is gonna be a lot, man. And if we do those two trees, it's gonna be, I mean, each one of those trees is as big as this one. So it's like three times the brush, you know? And then the wood is big too, so. That's fine, man. I just clean up that stub so it doesn't look so ugly right now. And then uh, it probably doesn't matter, but honestly, let's just do that. Let's just, uh, I'd actually like to rig this down too. I could use somebody on the ground. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's just do that. 